Hi, this is another quick video, this time on uh, how we can deal with multi-channel layouts in Circuit Studio. Um, I guess firstly, from a schematic perspective, it works exactly how uh, it did in Outium Designer and all the Outium Designer uh, documentation on how to do multi-channel layouts is quite good. So there's really not much to say there. You can, you can just read the documentation on how to use the repeat command with schematic symbols and uh, how to set up your schematic sheets so as to to generate, to put the ports on them, to, to bring them through to uh, to uh, sheet symbols, and uh, and it all works as you would expect. It all becomes a little bit more quirky though when uh, you actually end up over at the PCB. So in Outium Designer, each one of one of these is uh, is a sheet uh, is one of those repeating sheet symbols or one channel, and this would normally be enclosed within a room, and. Uh, the idea is then that you lay out one of them within a room and then copy that layout and paste it across all of the channels. And therefore you only lay out one and, and you're done. Now, they've completely removed rooms from Circuit Studio, so I have not seen anyone come up with a way yet of, well, of basically doing their functionality without it. So I've come up with a workaround. It's it's pretty ugly, but, uh, but it does work and it certainly beats... Uh, you know, in this case, there's 14 channels of one and seven channels of another. Certainly beats laying each one of those out individually and trying to get them all the same, because that would uh, that would really suck. So, first thing with this is uh, when you do a repeat command of a schematic uh, sheet symbol, you uh, you put in the name as your first parameter. So what I do is I uh, I give it a name and I put an underscore on the end. That way, when the uh, channels come across, they end up as underscore and then a number. So here it'll be underscore 1 through to underscore 14. So I do that to, to my channels, and then, uh, as you can see, when you come across, all your component names are that underscore, then number. That makes uh, this next bit easy. So I've, uh, I've laid out one of these very simple channels here, really roughly, just uh, just to demonstrate this. It's not uh, not like any uh, real layout because the whole thing's not finished by any means. Um, but so we lay out one channel to start with, and then we uh, get rid of all of the components from the other channels. So we've just got one laid out channel. Doesn't matter which number it is. So the next thing to do is you select all of these. You come up to the name section within the PCB inspector. And you, uh, if you click in there, and don't press enter at this point, you'll name them all the same thing. We end up, uh, there's an extra dialogue you can bring up from that. So uh, you can either do it with a formula or a batch command. The batch command's easier. What we want to do is actually get rid of the underscore and the number. And you'll see why in a tick. So what I do is I get rid of the component name out of the front of the channel name. And I do that on both sides. And then remove that underscore and number. That way it will basically just strip the end off. Hit OK on that and you can see it's stripped the end off of all of the uh, the names there. Now we can copy this and uh, I'll just uh, copy it there. Let's change my grid size to something a bit bigger so I uh, can lay them out in some order. And then paste and uh, what you'll see is when you paste it adds an underscore and a number after it. So you go down and you do that. In this case, I've got seven of these channels, so I'll just paste it seven times. Two, three, four. So we have our seven channels laid out. Now we grab uh, this one that we laid out and we remove the numbers off. We delete that. What you will find now is that all the net names are missing though. But that's all right, because all we do is we come up to Project, Import Changes, so you import the changes again, it'll come up that it's failed to match a whole bunch of stuff because uh, the unique IDs won't match anymore. That's okay. You uh, execute changes on that, and what it'll do is it'll uh, it'll link up those unique IDs and add all of the nets back in. Hopefully this won't take too long. And there we go, done. So now we've got all of our seven channels laid out. And all of the net names are correct, and all of those will now be linked correctly. And so that, that's basically all there is to it. 
Now the the painful bit, of course, is if you you made a mistake in one of these layouts and you need to redo it again. Well, you need to delete all but one channel and do the same thing again. Remove the numbers off it, change your layout, copy and paste them all to uh, to get the numbering back in, and then go through importing changes again to match up all the nets. It's, it's a bit of a hack, but it's still a heck of a lot better than laying out a huge number of channels, particularly when you've got complex bits like, uh, you know, some polygons and the like in, in amongst it all. So one other one other tip, I guess, is is, is uh, with, with all these naming, it's uh, pretty ridiculous. Whoops, not rules. If I go to options, uh, board options, so you can choose to display physical designators which you do need to at the start here so, so as you can be sure you're getting all your numbering right and whatnot but if you change over to logical designators then that gets rid of all of that mess and then uh, and then I would typically uh, surround each one of these in some way or divide them off in some way to uh, with a with a overlay and then put the channel number just as a text field scrolling down across all of them and that way it's quite neat Alright, thanks for listening.